Welcome back to another episode of the Sheep in the Meadow podcast. Today we have here Dr. Komar, and let's just get right into it. So, every single episode we have a new piece of artwork. Um, this piece of artwork my dad got for me. Uh, he saw it on Instagram, like a small creator, just wanted to have it, decided to give it to me for Christmas. I have no idea what it is. <laughs> uh, it could be from a show. It looks like anime. I, don't, I really, I have no idea. But uh, he's a hoarder. He just likes to buy things and have them and uh you know i like in in the attic Mm -hmm. he has he keeps all of his old clothes too which i kind of appreciate because sometimes i'll go up there and i'll be like oh this is kind of it's kind of cool so i'll like take take it it back out and wear yeah exactly (laughs) and he'll be like he's like that's mine i was like i was like yeah but you're not using it he's like i don't care he's put it back you're thrifting in your own attic. Basically. That's exactly. pretty wild. Maybe that's maybe that's the plan. Yeah. It's, everything's free up there. <laughs> you know what he should do? He should put like little tags on it. You go up there, five bucks, you take the sweater, six bucks, you take these pants. He'd make a killing off of he me. I'll probably tell you that. <laughs> Everything comes around. Yeah. But um what'd you bring in to show uh, the audience today? So what I brought in was actually I brought in something that I, I know you like to do the show and tell thing. So I'm gonna I actually brought you a gift. Really? Yes, because I always learn that when you get invited somewhere, you say thank you to your host and you and you bring them something. So I brought you something. I'm going to show it to you, but then you okay. have to figure out what it is. Okay. Okay. All this right. is this is the best episode ever. Somebody brought me a gift. Yeah. Yeah. I just hope you know. I I actually used it in class today. I showed a few people. I'm like, what is it? And very few people actually figured it out. Okay. Okay. So first impression <laughs> I get is. A bed, right? Because of the shape of it. <laughs> but there's a hole in it. <laughs> like, there's a hole in a bed. There's a hole, like here. And then there's a hole up here. So, I'm thinking... Right? Okay. Am I am I holding it the right way? Uh, you, you want a hint? All right, you got, you're not holding it the correct way. You got to okay. like, turn it this way here. So, this would be how you'd hold it. Okay, so I was Facing holding it the you. right yeah, way yeah. this way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I kind of want to say like a... Like a spectrometer, like you know, one of those things that you hold up and it has a light. Uh, but I, I, yeah, I stole it from Oppenheimer, that's what they use <laughs> to protect their eyes. <laughs> like from here, it kind of looks like an old Polaroid it camera. It does, right? So, so I, I built this for you over the weekend, and it's it's actually made out of uh, uh, dark walnut, and in the middle of it is oak. So, there's two layers of two different woods, they're both hardwoods. Right. So, I don't, I don't know if I'm going to mess up your audio, but if you take this. And let's see. I don't know. I'll I'll pick any song from Spotify. So you could hear that. Mm -hmm. Slip it in the slot. In the top slot. Yeah, yeah. Like it's facing you. Whoa. It's the first wireless amplifier. Oh. (laughs) So pull the phone out. You'll hear the difference. Now slip it back in. Wow. Isn't that cool? That's really so cool. So en- enjoy that. That is yours. I love it. And it's, That's great. It's kind of neat because for me, it's it's a combination of a little bit of science and a little bit of woodwork. So if uh-huh. you look in the middle, right, um, the wood is kind of tapered forward. Right. And what it does, it's the same thing as if you were speaking to somebody across the room and you cupped your voice, you know, cupped your mouth. Right. People could hear you a little bit better and it just focuses sound. Dude, this is... So cool. Isn't that cool? I, I, thank you so much, Dr. Cole. Oh, you're welcome. I Enjoy that. It. Yeah. This is great. Yeah. Um, dude, this is like, this is all, where'd you figure, like find out about this? I just, you know, I, I just started woodworking during COVID because mm. COVID was a bad time for me. It really spun me around. Right. And in, in order for me to keep my, my sanity, <laughs> I just started building stuff. And I, I always had an interest. And then I found out that Home Depot will deliver wood. And I was like, oh, this is great. I got Grubhub and I got Uber Eats and I got wood. So I was good to go. So I started building this wood shop in my, in my garage. And then it just it just started to evolve. And then I, I just started building stuff. So one of the things that I built, I use these. This kind of feeds my habit. Uh-huh. So this is a, a charcuterie board. Oh, wow. And the way that it's made, it's this is all wood. Right. And the rest of this is epoxy. So this, this again, there's some science involved. Right. There's some woodworking, but it starts off looking like this. 
Okay, that's just like the wood, right? Yeah, that's a piece yeah, of black yeah. walnut. And okay. then you basically build a mold and, yeah. It feels, what, what like takes me by surprise is how smooth it feels across. And like the epoxy just, like I said, it's just so such a smooth surface, even though it's two different, like... Uh, like materials, yeah, right? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Materials, that's the word I'm looking yeah, so for. There's a lot of it's like the sanding and stuff and the prep. But mm -hmm. So I, I believe it or not, I sell these things. Mm -hmm. I kind of feed my habit, mm -hmm. and then I, I just I just keep building, and I, I just I love it. Now I remember you telling me you you almost built like a a big like closet like bench thing, didn't you? Build it for for somebody in the in the school. I, I built I built a, a toy chest right. or a blanket chest for uh, um, Ms. Marino, mm -hmm. but I I built a ton of these for people here, and you know. I've built furniture for friends. I'm in the process now of building backyard furniture for my house. Oh wow! So, but for me, it's 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 the creative end of it that I love, and it's a lot of problem solving. And uh, the only thing I wish that I had paid more attention in geometry. Oh, okay. <laughs> in high school, because sometimes you're cutting angles, and it's wait, this has to be a 22 and a half degree. It just it just your head's a little bit so wrapped you, differently. So you actually are using like number angles to to create these yeah. pieces. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That, that that would piss me off. Like, yeah, I would just be so annoyed with uh, having to deal with more numbers, but... Oh, trust me. There's a lot of mess-ups. You know, they say measure measure twice, cut once. Okay. So, yeah, yeah. for me, it's like measure 11 times, cut once, and still screw it up. <laughs> and then I look at this piece of wood, and I'm like, all right, what do I do with this now? Because uh -huh. it's too short. I can't use it for anything. Right. And it goes in the strap pile, and my neighbor has a fire pit, so he loves me. <laughs> <laughs> all my scrap you know goes next door he must definitely appreciate it yeah um what i brought in today is definitely not as cool as woodwork <laughs> um it's really old i don't even know where i got it i feel like i was born with this thing but it's i'm a star wars fan obviously it's tatooine and when you press this button it's darth <laughs> Darth maul and qui-gon jinn <laughs> fighting on tatooine it's Silly little thing. Where did you get that? I, I honestly, I wish I could tell you. It's yeah. like it was one of those things where it's like, you've had it for so long where you don't even like think about where you got it from. Yeah. So I guess I just I really have no idea, but it's got to be really old at this point because I've I've had it for definitely probably since kindergarten, like for a very long time. So. Now do you keep it on a shelf in your room? Yeah, is it I, accessible? I do. I actually keep it like on my. Uh, <laughs> My bed frame, it's like on the headboard on the top. It's like a flat headboard on the top, so I keep it up there. Okay. So you can see it. I keep a bunch of things up there. Uh, but that was just one of the things where it's like, you know what? I gotta, I'm going to show this off today, you know? I like so I, Now, are you going to take that to college with you? <laughs> I don't know. That's that's a bit much. That, that's a personal item. You, you know what I thought that was, yeah. though? What? I thought that was a, a model of a human eye. Oh, really? F, like, at a quick glance, you know, I didn't I realize guess. it was Tatooine. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I could see it. I could see it. Right. I actually have an eye doctor appointment next Monday. Oh, they should bring it to him. Yeah. And ask yeah. him what he thinks. <laughs> <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> They've actually called me by surprise. Like, uh, I don't know if you've, you've probably been to the eye doctor before, right? Yeah. My eyesight is horrible. My mm -hmm. prescription's a plus 8.5. Oh. It's, yeah, it's like I'm wow. more than legally blind. I'm really blind. And, um... Like I used to, you know, they used to always do that thing where like you'd open your eye and they'd blow air into it to like see behind yeah. it. And now they have like this technology that just like shines like a light into it. And I like, uh, I think that's so cool. It is. It's very cool. Did you, have you ever had your eyes dilated? Yes. That's so, another thing that's so, really cool. <laughs> For me. So some people are claustrophobic, right? So I, I've only ridden the elevator in the school once. Okay. All right, I'll never do it again. I never have. So, so. I, I have this like, but when I got my eyes dilated, it's so funny. I didn't know what to expect. So I went there by myself. It's a rainy afternoon. I was working here at the time. It was a rainy afternoon. Like, and the, and he dilates my eyes. And all of a sudden, it's like, I, I can't see anything. I can't see anything. So I'm freaking out now. So finally, they calm me down. I sit in the waiting room. They're like, uh, are you okay to go home? Now think about my brain. I just want to get out of there. <laughs> <laughs> so I get out to my car. And I'm squinting the entire way home. And I'm going, I, I can't see anything. But I just wanted to go home. <laughs> So I, I've never let anybody dilate my eyes since. Oh, really? Yeah, and you really should. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. Why? Why? Like, why do you have just to see if anything's up? It's That's like a, the best like way checkup? to see it to the back of your eye, like to see right. the retina and all the blood vessels and stuff. But right. I was like, yeah, no, thanks. I'll pass. <laughs> 
Now, Dr. Komar, you, like I, I was talking to you before, and uh, I was praising you for being a man of many talents. Thank now, you. Now, not only are you uh, a scientist or a science teacher, but you're also a chiropractor, correct? Mm -hmm. Yep. How'd you get into chiropractic? So, well, first of all, I've, I retired about seven years ago. Right. And I, I was always into physical fitness and keeping fit. And when I got out of college, at, I went to Hofstra. I graduated in 85. And I didn't know what I wanted to do. I was a psych major. I didn't want to, I wanted to go to grad school and I changed my mind. I was, I was like, I don't know if I want to be a clinical psychologist. So I went out to sales and I, mm. I sold, believe it or not, <laughs> my first job was I worked for Carnation Foods okay. and my job, have you ever heard of Fancy Feast cat food? No. Or Mighty, Mighty Dog dog food? No. All right. So this, <laughs> it's, it's like canned imitation garbage right. that people feed their animals. Right. right. So my job was I had all these supermarkets in Queens. I had to go there and I had to make sure that these cans had the perfect facing. Like they had to be on the center shelf at eye level so that people would buy more of it. Right. That was my job. Okay. I started the first week of July. It was probably the first week of August and I remember saying to myself, oh my God, what am I doing? Who cares? If I want this particular cat food, I'll look for it. Right. And I quit. I was like, I'm not making a difference. Mm -hmm. And then I started looking into going to professional schools. I looked into dentistry, podiatry and chiropractic. I had a good buddy that was a chiropractor. And he kind of just kind of took me under his wing. And the rest was history. And I went to school. And I graduated in 92. And I opened my own practice right out of school. And I, I built that up over many years. I mean, I practiced from 92 till 2017. And I was actually teaching and doing chiro at the same time. So right. it, it was a lot. So how did you get into teaching? Like, where did you learn to teach the material that you teach today? So I, I have always liked helping other people. And, and I feel like I kind of have a, a good way of explaining things and, and kind of like bringing it down to, to a level where anybody could understand it. Mm -hmm. And most of my practice was I would see I, my office hours were Monday, Wednesday, Friday from 10 to 1 and 3 to 7. Tuesday afternoons and Saturday mornings. So I remember it sitting, like most of my patients would come in after four o'clock because they all worked. Right. So I was like, what am I doing? I, I could do something else in the morning. So I was like, all right, I'm going to double dip. Mm -hmm. So I went back to school. I was like, I'll teach. I got my master's in 18 months. And then I started teaching here. Believe it or not, I have never taught in another building. Really? I did my, I did my student teaching here. Okay. I started actually in the homework support program. Right. Then I did my student teaching here, and then I was hired in 2000, and I've been here for 24 years. Now, I know that you said you went to school to, at Kennedy, right? I did. So yeah. did you ever, like— Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> did I'm you a ever, pirate at heart. That, well, that's nice to hear. Yeah. But did you ever, like, uh, have the desire to teach at either Kennedy or Calhoun, like, even though you were only teaching here? I, I, di I didn't. I didn't. Actually, when I was in high school, my, it even says it in my yearbook— future aspirations we used to have like what are you going to do in the future mm -hmm. and and mine actually said professional drummer because i was <laughs> i was a drummer and that's that's what i did and i hung out with musicians and we we jammed every friday and saturday night and we and we played but i went to college and i was like yeah that's going nowhere like i'm good but i'm not i'm not great and and i just took a different path now like if you were to pick up drumsticks today and like have a set in front of you oh do you i still play oh you do oh yeah so, yeah. like, just for fun? Yeah, I have, you know, I go down to the basement, I throw some music on, and I start banging around. Do you only play the drums, or can you play other instruments, too? I only play the drums. Okay. Yeah. I feel like that's the coolest thing, because I feel like there's certain instruments that you can't really, uh, like, get a good, like, get a song out of, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. there's certain instruments for certain songs, but I feel like with drums, every single song has a certain drum mm -hmm. beat to it. Yeah. And you'll be able to pick up on it so fast, yeah. just off of the first, like... It's not called, well, it wouldn't be called a rift. It would be called a, like, just... Just, just laying down a beat. Yeah, exactly. And, and the best drummers, like, certain drummers, if you hear them, if you remove all the other music and just have the drum tracks, you'll know who it is. And there are certain drummers that fit that, that pattern. Like, uh, uh, Ringo Starr, mm -hmm. probably the most underrated drummer out there. Guy was phenomenal for what he needed to do. Uh, John Bonham from Led Zeppelin. You could listen to John Bonham without any Led Zeppelin around it and still know it's John Bonham. And that, to me, is like the sign of a phenomenal drummer. 
Yeah. Not at that level. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you do seem like you're not only a man of many talents, but like you have to keep yourself occupied. Yeah. Because based off of what you're saying, it's like <laughs> we're uh, teaching teaching during the day and then chiropractic after school. And then, you know, whenever you get bored, it's like carpentry or playing the drums or all yeah. this different stuff. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's like one of the things I try to get across to all my students is to try to have as many interests and hobbies that you possibly – and never stop learning. For me, the, 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 the I love when somebody says to me, oh, you, you can't do that. Really? Mm-hmm. That, that's almost like a dare. And, and even like with the carpentry, if somebody say, say – um, I have a friend of mine who was like, oh, I need this linen closet, and it has to be a custom size. And I was like, I'll build a few. And she's like, no, you can't do that. I'm like, I'll have a few in six weeks. And I built it. And it's just, for me, it's like, you need to keep thinking about growing as a person, Mm -hmm. evolving, trying new things. And you know what? Even if you don't love what you try, at least you gave it a shot. And for me, that's kind of what I do. I'm always bouncing around, always looking for new stuff. I, I skate. I play hockey. I just... So whatever whatever's going on, you skate as in like ice skate, right? So I I've been skating since I'm three years old. My hockey skills, okay, like my drumming, you know, I'm okay, okay. Uh, but skating, I spent every weekend at Newbridge Rink. I grew oh, up in Merrick, right, right. So we would go there. It was Friday night skating, Saturday skating, Sunday skating, and that's what we did. And I I could go two years without skating and get get out on the ice like within ten minutes. I'm I'm doing fine. That's great. Yeah. So, uh, do you also ski? I did, but I, I haven't skied probably in 30 years. And I, just, I don't know why. I just kind of, it's an expensive sport. I, I was listening to you and Geller, and I'm so like, expensive. I, I'd love to get back into it, but it is. It's, a, it's an expensive sport. My, my uncle has a house upstate in Wyndham, and um, I guess it's not under new ownership or whatever. I don't know what it is, but he was a club member, right? Mm-hmm. And so he's been a club member for probably decades now and this year i guess they're like re-entering people into the club okay so they're making the people who are already part of the club re-enter too so oh. he has to still he has to pay like twenty thousand dollars just to be in the club mm-hmm. this year even though he was already in it for the past multiple years and like when i heard that it just made me realize how expensive some sports are yeah. and how like you know like privileged you are to really be like practicing a sport like that and i i think of hockey golf uh not really i mean not really hockey but skiing golf stuff like that and Mm -hmm. that's what really makes me think like this is really expensive it is i mean i think some of these golf club memberships are a hundred thousand dollars and up and there's a reason why inner city kids play basketball Mm -hmm. because you need one ball and multiple kids and you have a game yeah Try doing that with hockey equipment, golf equipment, ski equipment. It's it's expensive. Yeah. So um, it's well, yeah. It's known as more of like the, uh, like preppier type of sport mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Yep. But I I love it. Like having the opportunity to go up and like actually spend a weekend or whatever skiing. It's now. Do you ski or snowboard? So when I was like three, my parents put me on skis because that's what my whole family did. And yeah, it was. I was fine at skiing, but I was just like, I wasn't like a fan. I always thought snowboarding was cooler, so I decided <laughs> to try and snowboard. It, it definitely, it definitely is cooler, but I decided to try and snowboard. And you know, I was like, I was fine at snowboarding. I definitely wasn't good, like at all. But I was fine at it. Like I'd be able to get down the mountain, maybe fall a couple of times, mm-hmm. but like I was able to get down the mountain. But like, I just, I wasn't enjoying it. Right. So I went back to skiing and I realized how well of a skier I was. So I was just like, oh, I'm not going to go back. Yeah. But this year I'm really motivated to snowboard because I really want to like do the tricks, like mm-hmm. do the park and everything. And like I can skateboard on land. Like I'm, it's not like I can do tricks oh, wait, on you a board? skateboard. Well, not like, not like that. Like it's not like I can do like a kickflip or anything like that, even though I really wish I could. Okay. And like I thought, like I've tried to do it. But it's like, it takes time and it takes, you know, it takes time and patience. And that's the part where I have to reel myself in is the patience part. But, um, like I can, I can like easily push on a board and like turn on a board and stuff like that. So it's just kind of like channeling that, uh, getting rid of the fear of like leaning Mm -hmm. of toe turns and heel turns when you're on a snowboard. 
So I got a proposition for you. You ready? Okay. When school ends and we're in the middle of Regents Weeks, you're going to come in with your board. Because I've been skateboarding my entire life. Oh, you have? I do. Yeah. So wait, can and you do tricks like that? Can no, you do I, like, I, so okay. I, I do old school tricks. Like I could do like, you know, a helicopter where it's like kind of end over end. I mean, these are okay. like tricks that go back to the 70s. <laughs> okay. when we use like little plastic boards that were like built on toothpicks. Right, right, right. So I, I went out and I bought a surf skate. I don't know if you know what a surf. No. So these boards are made by Carver. And they're basically, I, I tried surfing. I'm, again, I, I'm a dabbler. <laughs> but I bought this board because the board, you can actually carve turns on it. And it's supposed to simulate surfing. So I, I bought the board because I was like, I already know how to skateboard. Like, this is great. Yeah. I brought it to school one day. Now, when I was in high school, if you skateboarded around the hallways, you most likely were going to get suspended for that. Okay. So I was like, this is a dream. I got to do this. So I brought my, this is a great story. I brought my surf skate in Regents Week. This goes back. Mr. Harrington was the principal of the school. Right. And I was ripping around the hallways on this thing. There's nobody in the building. <laughs> <laughs> and and I was really I was cruising pretty good and uh -huh. in in a closed environment you know when the hallways are like three feet off your you know off your sides right. you feel like you're going 100 miles an hour right so I'm skateboarding downstairs on the first floor and Dr. Karn comes out of her office and and Mr. Caballero comes out he's the assistant principal at the time and the two of them start hysterically laughing they're like wait you're not a board I'm like yeah <laughs> so Caballero gets on the board he's tooling around the hallway a little bit Dr. Karn tried a little bit then Mr. Harrington comes out he goes what's going on out of here and it's, <laughs> it's just like me just boarding around the school <laughs> that's great I like that it's a lot of fun you got you have to do it the floors are super silky it's right nice. that's what's really nice about it is the smooth floors yeah. but um <laughs> like yeah I would love to learn how to like actually do tricks on a skateboard because like I, you see that, and it's kind of like, damn, that's really cool. It is. They're real really talented. Cool. So, like, you said, like, helicopter. I thought of, like, a like a shove it. Would you be able to do that? I don't know what that is. It's like... <laughs> I, a shove it? I guess I'd have to and show that you That sounds like video. something I don't want somebody doing to me. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know what? Yeah, you're so, right. So, it's basically, like... A, a, a helicopter is like you're, you're, you know, you're sideways, and then right. you somehow bring the heel up, and you could swing the heel over the top of the board. Yeah, and then so you're you're basically going in the opposite direction, right? And then do it again, and just keep oh, doing it while you're on still standing on the board. Yeah, while yeah, you're on the board. Now, okay, yeah. now I know what you're talking that's, that's about. That's old school stuff. Yeah, but like you know, being able to control the board like that is yeah. still pretty awesome. Especially, I mean, do you still skate? Like, have you began on a skateboard like recently? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, really? I board all the time in my driveway. Are like I said, I'm never going to grow up. I'm <laughs> That's serious. Great. But, but I like, tell kids how old I am, and they're like, no, that can't possibly be. And I'm like, listen, age age is in your head. Yeah. You know, for me, it's just a number. So, yeah, you, you do lots of stuff and stay young. I, I mean, I appreciate the fact of how enthusiastic you are about still doing, like, you know, activities like that. <laughs> that I mean, that's impressive. You yeah. can tell anybody that, they're going to be like, oh, my gosh. Yeah. Like, that's crazy. But, um... Yeah, that's really cool. Um, I've tried surfing. I'm not bad at surfing. Okay. Again, I'm not good at surfing. It's just like... Now, where did you surf? Did you surf down here or... Down here, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there was like this program, like a like a week thing that I think me and my sister did, and uh, like two of my friends, and uh, I was pretty young at the time, and they, they basically just taught you how to surf in a week. Did, was it scoot and surf? Yeah, scoot and surf. Yeah. So I did, I did scoot in like two years ago... <laughs> With my daughter, okay. <laughs> she's 16 at the time, and I, I'm a little older than that, <laughs> and, I, and we went for a week, and I, I watched her within a day or so, she was up and surfing, right. and me, I, I was drinking water all week. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, but it was fun, I mean, it's, it's really, t it's a lot harder than it looks. It really does look pretty easy, but like, yeah, I, I know that the bigger the board, the easier it is, yeah. and then the smaller the board, the harder it is, obviously, vice versa. But um, my sister, um, she loves to surf, and she's pretty good at it. She's getting better, obviously. But um, now that she's in college, and she's got, like, these longer winter breaks and whatever, mm -hmm. she just got back from Costa Rica. Oh, that's a 12th. nice place to surf. So my, I have a lot of family there. Like, I, I probably have, like, it's one of those situations where I have so many cousins, I don't even know a lot of them. Mm -hmm. that they're all, I have a lot of family there. So my sister stayed with a lot of family there, but... They went to the beach, and she was able to go surfing there. And it's truly, like, that whole, like, you know, living on the beach type of aspect where it's cool kind of like, you know, like, 
living in a, like a little hut and you wake up and yeah. you got like grab like a mango from a tree and then you go <laughs> surfing and you come off and you like cook like a fish for dinner or whatever. I think that's so cool. But um I was really jealous cuz I wanted I wanted to go to Costa Rica but you know, it was her it was like her birthday like trip yeah. whatever and it was Would like, you go with college friends or She went by herself. Wow. It was like it was more you of like about a, Lily, right? Yeah, it was yeah. more of like a getaway like a you know, like a peaceful type of uh Good for vacation her. for herself. Which I was, like I said, I was very jealous. But um, see, a lot of people won't it. travel by themselves, and I love to do that. Oh yeah, where have you been? Uh, well, I've I've done stuff like uh, I've done research competitions where I've traveled by myself to California, oh, wow. and it's just a bless. Actually, I took a student out there years ago. This was like back in 2014. 2014. Okay. So he had we were out there a whole week, but there was one day where he competed, and all the teachers, the chaperones, had a free day. Mm-hmm. Well, don't tell me I have a free day in California. So <laughs> I rented a 2014 uh, Corvette. Okay. It was brand new. Okay. They brought it to my hotel. I have great pictures too. And I drove the Corvette from Los Angeles all the way up Pacific Coast Highway to Santa Barbara by myself. I mean, you know, top down, music blasting, you know, Pacific Ocean on the on the left. It was a dream trip. Absolutely loved it. So only right way to do it if you're running a Corvette, right? So, yeah. So what year was that? That was 2014, and, and so, it was a brand new vet. Yeah, exactly. That's brand it was new. Out like six months. So yeah, it was a lot of fun. That's that's really cool. Yeah. So um, I actually had a question about the the chiropractor thing again. Yeah. So when you came out of school, mm-hmm. obviously, uh, for any I guess student that's going to college, uh, a lot of the thing that's on their mind is like debt how much money you got to pay and whatever. Yeah. So you get, you came out of Hofstra, you said, right? And mm-hmm. then you went to school for the chiropractor. Area. Correct, yeah. So, yeah. in like, you know, what I'm thinking is, like, how are you, like, how are you paying for this? Like, this is a lot of money. So I'm guessing, like, student debt, student loans, stuff yeah, like that. And then, loans. and then throughout, like, being a chiropractor, that's what paid it back and what whatnot? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I was, I'm trying to think, like, my, my total debt, I graduated in ninety two and I owed eighty thousand. Okay. Which in ninety two is a lot of money. It's yeah, probably yeah. like one hundred thirty now. But I I remember that I was really I I started practicing. I was making pretty good money, and I just started making extra payments. I was like, I got to get this off my plate quickly. Right. And I think I paid the loan off within maybe seven years or so. But but I I know what you guys are going through, and some of the like medical school, dental school, the debt is insane. Yeah. And coming out, you know. Sometimes I, f- I feel like you should look at return on investment. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, that's great. You came out with this really wonderful professional degree, but are you going into something where you're going to be able to financially pay back the loans right. and also have a nice li- lifestyle? I mean, that's, I mean, at the end of the day, that's, you want to live your life, right? Right. Exactly. That's and a tough balance. It, I, I think it's definitely a tough balance, but um, I mean, the way you handle it, it sounds like you're going to have a nice little retirement for you. Do you yeah. have any plans for after you retire? You know, I I don't even think about retiring. And I'll, t- I'll tell you why. Because first of all, coming in here, like hanging out with you guys is the best. Like my students are just, I have some classes, characters in the classes. They, they kind of keep you going and stuff. There are good days and bad. I have never heard such good reviews for a teacher other than like Geller or Patton. Yeah. The science teachers, let's yeah. go for that. Then you and Steckel. Like literally everybody I talk to that have you or Steckel, it's like, Nothing but positive, positive talk. Like well, that's really thank it. you. But um, Dr. Komar, <laughs> again, we are running out of time. No, it, uh, the studio was, members want to leave. This was great. This was a pleasure. So I'm glad you liked it. I, yeah, I'm, I'm, I want to say thank you again for this gift. This oh, is, you're very welcome. This enjoy is awesome. it. Yeah. and it's like it's heavy. It is. It's like I said. It's walnut. So it's, yeah. it's you'll enjoy it. Oh, you may never use it. I don't know. Maybe it'll end no, up in, in the I'm, attic with dad's stuff. Oh, I'm definitely going to use it. This is this thing is so cool. You're gonna I, walk I, in, dad, I got something new for you to hoard. <laughs> 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 All right. Um, that's the rest of the episode for Sheep in the Meadow. Uh, thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you guys next time.